Wonderful. Oh, great. Welcome, everyone. I am, um, I think we'll just wait a few more minutes to see if anybody else is going to join. Welcome. Okay. Jackie, do you think we're ready to get started or we should wait a couple more minutes? Do you think a couple more people might join us? Like two to three minutes. Uh, we did have quite a few more people registered. So maybe if we just give Wonderful. them a moment to jump in. Yeah, absolutely. We need some background music. <laughs> Yeah. Welcome to those that just joined. We're just giving folks a couple more minutes to join and then we'll go ahead and get started. I think we can go ahead and get rolling. Want to make good use of everybody's time this morning. Um, if you have a camera, we'd love to see your face. So please feel um, welcome to join us that way. No worries if um, you'd rather not. Um, I do want to let just some quick housekeeping. We are recording. Um, so just wanted to let everybody know that um, this webinar will be recorded. And we'll go ahead and get us kicked off here. Um, so good morning, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us. Um, this is our uh, September Food for Thought, which is our Hunger Action Month edition. I'm Jessica Gosa. I'm Treasure Coast Food Bank's Chief Development Officer, and I've been so excited about this year's Hunger Action Month and all the initiatives that we have going on with our community and our partners. And I think we put together a really great presentation for you um, that will highlight <laughs> some of the activities and the work that we're doing. And you're gonna hear from lots of our Treasure Coast Food Bank team members who are gonna share inspirational stories and all the ways that um, we hope you'll join us um, this um, Hunger Action Month. So I am gonna go ahead and introduce you to the panel. Is everybody able to see the screen okay? I'm just gonna, okay, perfect. Just wanna make sure that we're all on the same page. Okay, great. So I've introduced myself. Um, I'll be kicking us off and giving us some background about 
um, a little bit about Treasure Coast Food Bank and our role in Hunger Action Month. Victoria Watts is our volunteer experience manager, and she's going to lead a discussion about our volunteer program. Uh, Andrea Santos is our retail store donation coordinator, and she's going to talk about all things food drives. And Karen A. ALO is our donor relations manager, and she's going to talk about the generosity of our community. Um, and Gary Porter is going to take us home today and talk us all about um, special events and events that we have on the horizon. So um, to sit back and relax. Also, we do have um, a chat feature in this webinar. As questions come to your mind, please feel free to put them in the chat. Um, we have left time at the end of the presentation to do a Q&A, so we promise we will get to those. So please feel free to, um, as questions come to your mind, to put them into that chat box and we'll get to them. All right. So what you're going to hear today is how when we work collectively together as a community with a shared commitment to end hunger, we inspire widespread action. And that's really what Hunger Action Month is all about. Um, hunger Action Month is part of a national month-long movement to raise awareness about food insecurity and hunger and really to inspire action across our communities to take action, not just the Treasure Coast, but the entire United States. Um, so hunger and food insecurity are often uh, hidden issues. In fact, the faces of hunger are changing. They look like all of us. Um, and orange is the color of hunger relief. It represents self-determination and vibrancy, and it's hard to miss. Um, so this is why um, so why is Hunger Action Month so important? Um, virtually every county in the United States is experiencing um, soaring rates of hunger relief, um, of hunger and food insecurity. Locally, one in four individuals, including children, don't have enough food to be healthy and thrive. So we're really seeing an increase in need at Treasure Coast Food Bank. We're seeing an elevated demand that is 34% higher compared to pre-pandemic levels. So also today is National Food Bank Day. Um, so this fits perfectly into Hunger Action Month um, because food banks like Treasure Coast uh, food Bank are working in their communities every day to address the complexities of hunger and food insecurity. Um, and at Treasure Coast Food Bank, we talk a lot about all the work that we do, and, and we provide a lot more than just food. We have strong collaborations and partnerships and innovative programs and efforts that we're leading to help our neighbors gain better health outcomes, stronger self-sufficiency, and long-term food security. And just to um, speak to our some of the work and the impact that we do, we're serving 250,000 people every week. Um, really speaks to the need and underscores and emphasizes just how significant the need is in our area. Last year, we delivered um, 55 million meals um, in Indian River, St. Lucie, Martin, and Okeechobee counties, and 14.5 million pounds of fresh produce, which we're, we're very excited about the produce number um, in the sense that we know that it's equally as important that we not just provide people food, but we're providing access to healthy, nutritious food. And all of this work is done through our 20 plus direct service programs and through a really robust and diverse network of 300 plus partner agencies. So our month long awareness efforts also provide an opportunity um, for us to reflect on the journey that um, we have been on at Treasure Coast Food Bank, and it's been a long journey. We've been um, around since 1988, so it's been a 35-year journey. And while we've made lots of progress, if you look at the timeline, we still have, have work to do. Um, so there's a lot to unpack on this slide, and so I'll just highlight just a few notable mentions. I personally love to look at some of those early days in terms of numbers, mm -hmm. looking to see, you know, I love to see that we were operating out of a 15,000 square foot warehouse, which is hard to imagine how that was possible. Um, 
you know, and what and what that would look like today, considering um, all the locations and, and what we have planned ahead. In 2015, you see that Judith Cruz, our CEO, was hired. And when she began, and Krista, who I think is on this call, who is our chief strategy officer, came came on board about six months after Judy, they would tell you we had 14 employees. <laughs> so today we have 80 employees, we have 10,000 volunteers, you know, there's been significant growth um, to really um, support our community. Lots of program innovation has come um, over the years. You know, it's about addressing the root causes of hunger as well, providing more than just food, case management, job training programs, really innovative programs that are built to wrap around the unique needs of our community and, um, and the individuals, and really um, putting emphasis on a person-centered approach. And one of our most exciting, I think, um, milestones that just happened this past February is that we broke ground on a 132,000 square foot um, distribution center that we hope to be in next summer. Um, and this is going to be um, a game changer for our organization, but a, a really strong support to our community. We're looking forward to the program expansion that that's going to bring the volunteer um, opportunity and growth, new partnership opportunities with the community. Um, we're anticipating the ability to provide 76% more service um, through that through that building. So we are very anxious and excited to get into that. And, you know, our ultimate vision for the future is a hunger free treasure coast. And so, you know, having campaigns like what we have today, uh, what the information we're giving you today in this month long hunger action month are all about that inspiring and, you know, igniting movement across all of our communities um, to um, alleviate hunger and um, food insecurity. All right, let me get, let's see if I can advance. Sorry, there we go. Um, I love the words on this slide that Treasure Coast belongs to our community. That's what we're all about. Um, we're conveners, we consider ourselves advocates. We're creating solutions with our community. We don't assume that we know. Um, and our community, our work really is in the community. It's through working together that we really move the needle in the dire right direction for our neighbors who are facing food insecurity and hunger. Before I turn it over to Andrea, um, I just want to mention, so this Hunger Action Month is, it, we have a big challenge ahead of us. We're working with Feeding America and communities across the country to take collectively 1 million actions against hunger. So we hope you'll join us um, here at Treasure Coast Food Bank. Um, we're going to give you lots of information about how you can join that effort. Um, taking a million actions won't end hunger overnight, but it's a powerful sign that we're making change together. So, Andrea, I'm going to let you take the mic. All right. Good morning, everyone. How are you? Um, I'm going to talk to you a little bit about uh, our food drives. Our food drives have grown tremendously in the last years. Um, and just last year alone in 2023, um, our food drives raised 183,199 pounds of food. Um, and that is wonderful because that equals to 152,665 meals straight into the community. So great job. And Food drives is really something that everyone can get involved with. Um, you can do it just as a personal food drive um, and you can do food and funds so you can raise both. Um, and you can do it as, as a school, businesses, really everyone in the community can get involved. And just like Jessica said earlier, one in four in the Treasure Coast is going through food insecurity, but that means that three out of four can make a difference and can really help their community. Um, so <clears throat> these are some of our most wanted items. Um, we have proteins, of course, so canned meats, canned fish, um, canned beans, grains. We also have a uh, state staples that we usually have in our pantries or at home like peanut butter 
um, laundry detergent, food diapers, all of those are very, very needed. And some things that people don't think about, like personal hygiene products, um, who thinks about diapers for um, a food drive, but they're very needed in the community right now. And um, here we go. It's very easy to start your own food and fun drive. Uh, all you have to do really is start from the website. You go to stophunger.org, you do your registration. Uh, one thing I would say, it's really great to set a goal and really think about how much food you or funds you want to uh, recruit or, or make. Uh, receive collab collection material, sorry. Um, so whether you want to collect in a bin and have it somewhere visible, do you, you want to collect in your own materials? Um, just a couple things to think of and try to make it fun. Give it a theme. Uh, if you're going to want to do um, peanut butter and jelly sandwich uh, ingredients, you can do that. Uh, or if you want to do something more like a Thanksgiving theme and have uh, any kind of things that would be used for a Thanksgiving meal. and Make sure to promote it. Tell everybody in the community, put it on socials, um, make posters, and really let everyone know that you're doing this so everyone can pitch in and has a chance to collaborate with you. Take photos, take pictures, and it helps really, really with like tracking and keeping everyone incentivized and seeing what you're doing. Um, make sure to... Um, keep weights and keep track of how much you've got so far and how close you are to your goals. And then once we have it and we deliver it, we'll give you a final weight and tell you how many meals that that will equate to. And you can announce and celebrate with everyone that's helped you uh, and just really celebrate that you've helped make a difference. We have a couple of, of highlights here from food drives that we've had in the past, and they're really, really great stories that I'd like to share with you. So right here, beginning, we've got Miss Julia, and this was the third year that she did her food drive. Uh, her mother actually does a food drive for us um, in the business that she works in, and she was inspired by her. So she decided that she wanted to help as well, and so she worked with her neighbors, her school, and classmates. And she worked really hard for two weeks and she collected 173 pounds of food, which over which made over 144 meals that she helped raise by herself, just, you know, out of the goodness of her heart for the community, which is wonderful, great work. And she's starting her fourth annual, so we will wish her luck. She starts in October. Um, here in the center, we've got Pete Sellum from uh, Campbell Snacks. Pizza Fort Pierce native, and he grew up here, and he just thought one day, I want to give back. So he partnered with Walmart. They gave him a space, and he brought in a whole bunch of uh, snacks from from Campbell Snacks, Goldfish, and everything. He had a DJ. His coworkers dressed as um, characters from uh, holiday movies. So we had the Grinch there. Uh, there was a um, the snowman from Frozen, uh, and we had Buddy the Elf, and we also did a food drive, and we collected some funds and food. People would come take pictures, and it was just a great time. Um, overall, Pete was able to collect over 139 pounds of food, and that's just imp improvised uh, from people shopping that day. And it was just a really great idea, and he's, I think, looking into doing it as well this year. Uh, so it's going to be a yearly thing that, that he does, and it's going to be fun for the community to get involved and see it get bigger. Um, we've got Mr. Bill and Debbie from the PGA Verano community who are wonderful. They are our hunger heroes, and they really, really um, work hard monthly to do a food drive and they get the whole community of PGA involved and they will collect from street to street and once they're done um, collecting they'll bring it over to the food bank and really has it's grown um, they've collected over 2,774 pounds um, and that's just 
as from January to July. So that's provided over 2,311 meals to the community, which is amazing. And and they'll keep going. They do it monthly, and every month it grows. So really, really, it's it's incredible what the community can do when they are together and really incentivized into fighting hunger. Um, we have... Uh, many ways that we get involved, but we really, really want to make sure that everyone knows that every can counts. Um, everyone can make a, a difference. Community involvement and hosting a food drive really is a great way that, to bring the community together and it really makes an immediate impact uh, into the community. So it's a powerful way to show your spirit and really show how much you care Every box, every donation, everything matters um, because it helps and really creates a really good wholesome picture of how the community cares about each other and wants to make a difference. So this is Food Drives. Um, and any questions that you guys have, just put it in the chat and I'll be happy to answer. Um, in the meantime, here's Miss Victoria. Thank you so much, Andrea. Love those stories. Um, so, Victoria, we're going to kick it over to you to talk about um, volunteerism at Treasure Coast Food Bank. I think you're on mute, and we did. There we go. There we go. Yeah. And there we go. Okay. Sorry, guys, some technical difficulties. <laughs> we just need to fast forward on the slides. There, there she's go. got it. She's yeah, got Jackie it. was helping me out with that. Okay, so good morning, everybody. Sorry about that. Um, I wanted to give a little bit of information about myself. Um, so I am the volunteer experience manager here, and that has come from a long time of volunteering in our community and especially at Treasure Coast Food Bank. Um, I volunteered here for eight years before I actually became official part of the team. Um, I still kind of feel like I'm volunteering. Every day is amazing um, and working with our community is incredible. Um, so I actually met Mr. Gary Porter eight years ago. Uh, my first volunteer event was Pack the House, which is coming up in October. And I just kind of stayed on board since. Um, I have been with our volunteers in our mobile distributions. I've done the food sorting and packing. I um, recently like switched over to our community outreach events in the past year. Uh, so I've done it all, and I'm just happy that I can hopefully inspire more people to join our volunteer community in the future. So let's talk about some of our volunteer opportunities. Uh, we have a ton. Uh, we offer them on weekends, during weekdays. We really try to fit anybody's schedule. That way we can make sure that anybody wants to give back to our community has opportunity to do so. We offer volunteer opportunities generally Monday through Friday. Uh, we have volunteer shifts in our warehouse um, each, each day of the week for weekdays. We have them from 9 a.m. to 12 p.m. and then 1 p.m. to 4 p.m. And those opportunities are going to be, you know, so sorting food um, that we get donated at our Angle Road facility. So you'll be checking for expiration dates, um, putting them into like items to then go out to our partner agencies um, to help feed the community. And then we also have opportunities in our Kings Highway warehouse where you'll be sorting dry good items. So that could be anything like med medicine, um, pet food, baby products, office supplies, really anything non-food. And then outside of that, every week we do have, um, you know, opportunities at our production kitchen as well. Uh, that's where a lot of people that may have a passion for cooking can go in and help our our TCFB staff make the meals that then go out to our partner agencies. Uh, in summer, it's definitely a huge need to have volunteers in that role as we have our summer feeding program, which feeds children all throughout the four counties that we serve. We also have a monthly friends and family day, which usually takes place on the first Saturday of the month. Uh, it'll actually be happening tomorrow for September, and I hope I get to see some of you there. We at that we go to our Kings Highway facility. Um, you can bring your friends, you can bring school groups. Um, we have some work groups come as well, and you just gather with your friends and family and you help sort some of our dry good items. And it's a great way to get involved and be able to also bond with the people that you're close with. 
Uh, each week we do have different volunteers that come in every single week and they've kind of created their own little community. So we have um, a lot of our retired retired community that comes into our warehouses and sorts every single week. Um, we have Miss Judy and Miss Kathy who come into our Kings Highway and our Angle Road facilities and they help us out every single week and we are so grateful for them. Um, we have a few different volunteers that have joined recently and kind of um, join that little community. So even if you don't have people that you can volunteer with at Friends and Family Day, you can come in on another day, meet people, and maybe join that little group that we have going. We also have some dedicated volunteers at our production kitchen that would be great for people to work with and get to know. Um, we have Mike and Roz that come every Tuesday, a husband and wife, and they help us out tremendously. We have a professional chef, Chef Bob, that comes in every Wednesday and also helps out. So we have amazing people that show up consistently to our events, and we are so grateful for them. Go to the next slide. So we have a ton of volunteer opportunities, like I said, but we also try to meet people where they are. So if you have a specific skill or trade that you are interested in getting experience in or just think that maybe we could utilize, definitely feel free to reach out to us and we'll see where we can put you. Um, like I said, we have a professional chef that works in our production kitchen. We also have um, a few new volunteers who are in, who have their CDL license or worked in a CDL trade in the past, and they're going to be starting as volunteer drivers for us soon. So we really try to meet everyone where, where they are. Um, we're working on getting some more administrative volunteers in. If we have anybody that's interested in graphic design as well, we'd love to work with you and see how you can assist our marketing staff. Uh, we really want to meet you guys where you are and make sure that your skills are being put to use um, and that you definitely feel like you're getting something out of this opportunity. And outside of the um, skills-based volunteering, we also have a ton of opportunities available this Hunger Action Month. Um, so we have our Outrun Hunger on the 21st. It is a great first time to get involved. You will see so much of our community come together. Um, you'll meet a lot of our staff um, and really see who, you, who you'd be dealing with on a daily basis if you volunteered with us. We have a lot of our staff joining the run as well, so you may get to run alongside them if you decide to run with us. Uh, and we have tons of spots still open for that. If you're interested, definitely send an email to volunteer at tcfoodbank.org and we'll see where we can put you for that. Um, outside of that, we also had um, special events committees for Hunger Action Month. So we had our Hunger Action Month committee who helped us who helped assist with Light Up Orange. They reached out to community members, um, business businesses all along the Treasure Coast, and they helped, um, you know, have them do make donations to get light bulbs um, to put outside their businesses to help spread awareness for Hunger Action Month. So there's all different types of things you can do. Um, you get to go out in the community. You can take photos for us. Uh, again, we try to meet people where they are and see, you know, what they want to do and what they think they can do best. So the volunteer experience is unique at every Every opportunity that you go to, you're going to meet different people from our staff. You're going to meet different volunteers. Um, we do on-site training at every single task, so you'll never feel like you're left in the dark with anything. Um, we provide safety training. We go through all the specifics, and we're always around if anybody has any questions. Uh, you'll get to work alongside, um, you know, amazing staff like our programs team, Antonio and Seth at our mobile distributions, who help run those and help guide you. Uh, you'll also get to work along um, the wonderful Roy and the wonderful Calvin, who are our dedicated warehouse staff, and they help with the food sorting, and they are gurus with it. They can answer any questions anybody has for it. Um, and then we have people like Tori, who runs our Market Fresh on the Move program. Um, she has dedicated volunteers each week, but we are looking for volunteers for a Wednesday slot. Um, you would get to go out to the Indian River County community, um, help sell fresh produce and other dry good items to the community there and you'd get to work with Tori who is just completely fun to be around and work with. And then to register to volunteer, um, you can definitely reach out, like I said, to volunteer at tcfoodbank.org. But if you're wanting to go ahead while you're on here or after this, you can go to stophunger.org slash volunteer. You'll be able to click on the area that says opportunities and kind of explore what we have going on. And then you'll be able to see a button that says register. Once you click that, it'll take you to our volunteer portal and you'll see everything that we have at least for the next two months. Um, and so you'll see our mobile distributions. You will see our 
warehouse shifts, you'll see production kitchen, and you'll see special events like the run that's coming up. So feel free to explore that on your own. Um, any age and physical requirements are always going to be listed there. So you'll always know what you're getting yourself into. It'll have the address, the time, uh, really everything that you're going to need. Specifically for our mobile distributions, we do have an age limit of 14 years of age or older. Uh, anybody under 16 will have to have a parent or guardian volunteering alongside them as well. When it comes to our warehouse, you can be eight years old and you can come and volunteer with us, but it's the same requirement of anybody under 16 having a parent or guardian alongside them. And we're happy to welcome any school groups, any business groups that want to come in as well if you want to do some team building. Um, and if it's school groups, the only requirement we have there is one adult per five children. <laughs> so we would be happy to accommodate you guys and work together to figure out how we can have you help end hunger on the Treasure Coast. And if you have any questions or need any help, again, feel free to reach out to that email. I will respond personally and I'll be happy to work with you. Lastly, we are so thankful for all of our volunteers so much. As you can see last year, we had 10,000 volunteers, which equated to 45,000 hours of service. Volunteers are at the heart of what we do. Uh, we would not be able to do anything without them because they really not only assist with everything that we have going on, but they're they're at our heart. They, you know, keep us going. They inspire us. And you'll be able to see the impact that you're making on, on your community um, right in front of you. So I'll give that back to Jessica so she can introduce the wonderful Karen. Yeah, thank you so much. That was great. Love um, hearing about our volunteers and the work that they do. So in amazed that we have 10,000 volunteers in a year. Um, Karen is our donor relations manager, and she's going to talk a little bit about um, the generosity of our community and um, how, how um, funds make such a tremendous impact for Treasure Coast Food Bank and our community. All right, Miss Karen, you got All it. Right. Hello. They said my name is Karen. Um, I've been with the Treasure Coast Food Bank for just over a year now. And um, as the donor relations manager, I really get the unique opportunity of getting to interact with our donors. Um, so while Victoria gets to see the volunteers and Andrea gets to see all the retail side of it, I get to talk with the people who are part of the backbone of how we operate. And not and within that, I also get to hear the why of their story. And I would like to share some of that with you as we go through um, different ways that we see our donors um, give. So why is it important for um, our donors to give to Treasure Coast Food Bank? We get to provide food, like I said, to the community. Um, and Treasure Coast Food Bank can turn $1 into eight healthy meals for our neighbors. And we get to do that because um, we have so many donors who give to us, but also um, because we get to leverage our buying power through um, corporations and farms that we have partnerships with, um, as well as um, other food donations that come in. Um, and so there is no small gift here. One dollar gets eight meals to our community. And I'm going to break that down a little bit more um, in a little while and show you how, you know, a monthly gift can really affect um, meals in our community. So... Who are our donors? On the surface, our donors are people who live here in the Treasure Coast um, with a desire to see everyone in our community have access to nutritious food. Like I said, I get to talk to some of these donors, and so I can see that their passion runs deeper than just the surface level. A lot of times the donors that I'm talking to get to share their stories about um, how at one point in their life, whether it was when they were a child and they saw their parents struggling or as an adult or someone like me who with COVID had lost my job and at a time I needed some support from Treasure Coast Food Bank, um, they have all experienced the other side of what it needs to be in need of help and getting food on the table for their families. Um, and so now that they are past that phase, they are wanting to make sure that uh, that our community has the same resources that they had access to. And so really getting to hear where everyone is coming from is a very impactful part of my job. Um, and, I, and I love to get to hear those stories and be able to share those with other people. Um, so we have a lot of ways to give here at Treasure Coast Food Bank. And I kind of just wanted to go through some of them because a lot of people don't understand all the intricacies that happen um, and ways that people can give. So our most common one that we see is individual giving. And that's broken down into many different um, ways. So 
A lot of our donors receive monthly direct mails from us. And in those direct mails, um, we've got um, stories about neighbors that are, are utilizing our resources and our programs in our community. Um, in our newsletter specifically, we also share um, updates on what are happening with our program. So we do, we share fundraising stories, our fund drive stories, um, and we share about our volunteers and what they're doing and um, our different programs throughout the community in all of our different counties. So in those envelopes that we send out, we also send a return envelope and we get a lot of our donations that way. So we get people who mail in um, checks to us so we can process the donation that way. Another way we see um, donors utilize giving is through our website. What a lot of people don't realize is that we take all of the standard ways that you can give, but we can also process Venmo payments. You can do PayPal payments. We also take cryptocurrency, which is a new one for us, and we're very excited about that. Um, and so if there's another way that you like to give that you we haven't mentioned or you don't see anywhere on our website, let us know. We will make that happen um, because we, again, want to meet our donors and our community where they're at. So we will, um, we're always open to that. And like Jessica was saying earlier, it's, it's a partnership. And so we want to do what is working for our people. Um, another way that we see individual givers give is through tributes, um, whether it is in honor of somebody or in memory of somebody. And um, we see a lot of donations that come through as a tribute. I got the privilege a couple months ago to talk to a donor um, who was making an in memory of gift they had a friend who had recently passed and their friend was a foodie and loved food and they had had discussions prior to uh, this gentleman passing and they knew that he wanted instead of flowers for donations to be made to the food bank because the his, the thought of or for him the thought of people going without food was just unacceptable and so they were making a gift on on their behalf for us um, and then we also get to hear people who are celebrating birthdays um, of their friends and their friends are like nope i don't want any presents please just make a donation to the food bank for us um, and so we get to celebrate with them as well um, another way that we have our we get to interact with our donors and i get to do this one more most frequently is with our monthly givers um, and so these people have set up recurring donations or they mail in a check every month um, and they give a set amount every month and it's kind of a set it or forget it and um, we get to talk to them um, when we're thanking them and, and get to hear some of their stories. But we have people in those situations who are giving sometimes $5 a month and sometimes we have people who are able to give a little bit more and they give, you know, $1,000 a month. But all of them are making a huge impact on our community. So I did a little bit of math, which I'm not great at, but I did it anyways. <laughs> and for our donors who are giving $5 a month, that if, if we're going to go with the uh, that $1 equals eight healthy meals um, in one month or that they're providing over 40 meals. So over the course of the year, they're going to provide 480 meals to our neighbors. And if you look at a family of four and if you're trying to feed them three meals a day, 480 meals is over a month's worth of food that this donor is able to provide to our neighbors who are looking for a little bit of help um, in the or to get food on their table. So even a little bit makes a big difference. Um, another way that we see, and these ones are always fun to attend, are third-party events. Um, we have donors who will create golf tournaments or mahjong tournaments, or um, if they own a business, they'll make some sort of creative fundraiser and they'll let us come in and um, and they'll raise sometimes food but also funds for us um, and those are always so much fun to be a part of um, and this to see the creative ways people think to fundraise is always great um, if you want some ideas you can always call me um, I would love to help you set up a fundraiser <laughs> um, one of the last ways that we see our individuals give is through legacy giving or planned giving. And this is really um, where you leave a portion um, of your funds or your state to us after you pass and you put that in your will. Um, Jessica would love to talk to you about that. If that's something that you're interested in, you can always give us a call and we can get you guys connected. So the second way that we see gifts come in is through corporations. And one of the um, biggest ways that we see this, it kind of straddles the line of both individual giving and corporate giving is through workplace giving. And in that, um, we have the individual who will have money taken out of their paycheck 
and that will come directly to us in the form of um, a donation in ACH and it comes through us that way. Um, but then the corporation or the business will match that fund. So we'll also get a double donation from them. Um, we see businesses who will also do that with volunteer hours. So Walmart, for example, their employees, when they volunteer, they get to go into a portal and put their volunteer hours in, and then Walmart Corporation donates money back to Treasure Coast Food Bank um, for those volunteer hours. So that's a win-win all around because not only do we get the help in the warehouse or at the event, then we also get the funds for that. Um, so I encourage you to check your um, with your employer and see if they have any sort of matching program or workplace giving program. And if it's something that they're interested in, again, they can give us a call and we'd be happy to help get them uh, set up for them. Um, another big way that we get help from our corporations is through in-kind donations. Um, we have our big partners, people like Walmart, CVS, Walgreens, who donate food to us, who donate home goods to us and products for us. And that also helps offset our costs when we go out and we leverage our buying power to buy uh, food for our neighbors as well. Um, more ways for our corporations to get involved are through event sponsorships and vendors. With our sponsorships, um, they really help offset the cost of the overhead for these big events that we get to do. We've talked about the Outrun Hunger coming up, Pack the House coming up, and we've got some great sponsors who not only get to be involved in that, but then they get to come out and see the people that they are impacting. We get to build, to continue to build our partnership with them, and we've met some really great people uh, through these sponsorships. Um, and then the last way that we have through for corporate giving um, is through cause marketing. We really get to leverage our partnership with Feeding America through cause marketing, um, and they get us connected with national cause marketing campaigns. So these are the ones where you see at the register and they ask, hey, would you like to round up your change or would you like to donate a dollar? Um, and we work with partners like Crocs or um, Pampered Chef, uh, Box Lunch, which we have now will have one in the Treasure Coast Mall, um, Wawa, CVS. All of those national companies we now get to partner with with these cause marketing campaigns, um, and then those funds come back, um, get shared, and come back to us. Um, so there are many, many ways that we uh, see donors give, and if you have any questions about that, please put them in the chat. I'd be happy to answer. Um, and so then the last thing I want to talk about is how you can help give us a voice. Um, you are our biggest advocates. <laughs> our community is our biggest advocate. Um, You've heard that we've been around for 35 years, um, and there are still some people in our community who don't know the scope of what we do here. Um, I didn't know the scope of everything we did, did do here before I started working here. There are so many programs. Um, there are so many ways that we can provide resources to our community. Um, and so if I have one takeaway from you today, it would be to jump on stophunger.org and just learn about one service that you could share with somebody who may be in need. Um, if it's, whether it's our mobile pantries or our order ahead program, just really understanding um, one thing. So if some, you hear somebody in the community, you're equipped then to share that information with you because as much as we love to talk about our jobs, um, we are not everywhere. Um, and so we, we can be in other places. Um, we love to give presentations. Like I said, we do love to talk about our jobs and what we do here. So if you have a group or if you have a club or a business and you'd like for us to come in and talk and explain some of the things that we, we do, um, let us know. We'll come out and we'll set up that presentation for you. Um, other ways that you can share your voice is really to learn about the legislation that's taking place, things like the Farm Bill, um, understanding what our, our politicians um care about when it comes to hunger relief le legislation um, and telling them how you support or don't support their decisions. Um, and then lastly, share something that you learned today with one of your family um, or friends. Uh, Gary's going to talk a little bit about a way that you can share something on Tuesday um, for Hunger Action Day, and that's just an easy way to uh, get the word out about what we do. So if you have any questions, like I said, put them in the chat. We'd love to talk to you. Thank you so much, Karen. Um, that was great. I love hearing about the generosity of our community and all the great ways that our community can um, get involved. Loved your math breakdown there. Really displayed the, the impact. Um, Gary, I'm going to kick it over to you to talk about our Hunger Action Month events and events we have on the horizon. All right. Thanks, Jessica. 
So yeah, we're super excited. Hunger Action Month is in full swing right now, and um, we're already seeing a lot of our wonderful partners, wonderful businesses in the community that are lighting up orange. Um, as we're lighting up orange, um, it's a way for individuals and families, you can uh, buildings, landmarks, businesses, schools, and universities um, across the Treasure Coast can all light up orange to support the 250,000 people that are experiencing food insecurity here on the Treasure Coast. Uh, this year we have 45 participating partners um, and so we're really really excited some of the folks are, are lighting up their entire buildings orange some people simply have just a sim single light in their front window with an orange bulb and it's all to symbolize their support of hunger action month so some of the ways that you can get involved this year with that is you can wear orange clothing uh, you can ask your coworkers, your family your friends to join you and when you're doing that, please be sure you take a photo and put it on social media and tag us at hashtag uh, TC. I'm sorry, at TC Food Bank. The hashtags are way gone by now. So um, light up your home or orange um, for the month by purchasing an orange light bulb or gel. We have those available still um, here at the Food Bank, and we'll provide you with information on how you can get one of those. Um, and then um, light up your office building. Ask your manager if you can simply do something um, with some of the light bulbs we have or the gels to light up your um, house of worship, maybe a community landmark. I know we have several fountains throughout the four counties that we serve uh, that are lighting up as well. Um, they can do it for the entire month. You can do it for a week. You can do it for a single day. So um, any way that you can help to participate in that is wonderful. And again, be sure you take photos and, and share those and be sure to tag us uh, in those photos. Um, another exciting event coming up is our fourth annual Outrun Hunger 5K. We're really, really excited about the um, this event this year. It's it's grown tremendously. It's going to be on Saturday, September 21st at the Causeway Cove Marina in Fort Pierce, and uh, it's going to start at seven seven o'clock in the morning. It's really early, but we're going to um, be there, bright eyed and bushy tailed, and um, we're going to have a lot of fun this year. We're expecting over 300 runners. And um, that's a 115% increase since our very first run in 2021. So um, again, just tremendous support for that this year. We're really, really excited. Um, all the participants are gonna receive uh, an event t-shirt, uh, finisher medals, which our medals are really, really, really nice medals. And then we're gonna have awards given out to the top three male and female finishers in each age category. There are 14 different age categories. So if you come out, you have a pretty good chance of maybe getting an award. So you never know. Even some of the walkers um, might might get something. So um, we're really, really um, excited to do that this year. Um, all the runners are going to receive a custom race bib and with chip timing. And um, all the finishers will receive a certificate with your timing as well for the run. Uh, the race course is a 3.1 mile flat course. And um, it's got a really spectacular view of the beautiful water here in Fort Pierce as you're going along the Causeway Cove and Seaway Drive. Um, and one of the really nice benefits of our run this year, working with the company that we do, is a, the race is a USATF, which is from the USA Track and Field Organization. And it's a certified qualifying race for future 5Ks as well as 10Ks. So um, if you're an avid runner, this is a great way to get qualified for a future run and um, come out and support a great cause as well. Uh, another thing we're really excited about with the run is we have 20 vendors that will be on site this year at the run, and it's going to be a lot of our sponsors and some of our other wonderful partners that will be there. Um, the booths will open up at 6 o'clock a.m. They'll be there until the run concludes. Uh, just stop by. They'll have a lot of goodies for you to pick up, a lot of wonderful information, and just stop by and tell them thank you for being there and for supporting Treasure Coast Food Bank and the 5K. Um, registration is still open as as uh, Victoria mentioned earlier, the registration is open. It'll actually be open until the morning of the run, right up till about 7 o'clock a.m. Um, so the registration fee is $35. And again, you get the t-shirt, the finisher medal, and all the other um, things that come with that. And you can go to our website at stophunger.org slash event and register for that. And uh, lastly on the run is going to be, um, in addition to that, we're going to have a really cool packet pickup party. Uh, that's going to be on Friday night. Um, the 20th of September, and that'll be at Cobb's Landing in downtown Fort Pierce from 4 p.m. to 7 p.m. You can come by, you can pick up your race packet, your event t-shirt, and there's going to be some great uh, complimentary food there, some hors d'oeuvres, uh, there'll be a cash bar available, and uh, we're going to have some music there as well, and it's just a great way to come hang out, uh, meet some of your fellow runners, and uh, make some new friends, 
and um, really just get excited for the run that will be taking place the next day. So in addition to the run this year, we wanted to really come up with a way um, to, to do some additional fundraising. Based on our goal for the run, um, we our goal was to make enough to provide 200,000 meals. Um, but we also thought that it would be really cool to come up with a unique way to do some additional fundraising through our participants and um, get them more involved with that. And so the Hunger Hero Challenge was created. Um, and it's um, really taking uh, it's really taken off big time and probably more than we all ever thought it would. Um, but it's a fun way to participate, um, to fundraise either for yourself or maybe as a team. I know we have um, 37 teams signed up, I think, right now. And um, so far, I believe they've raised about 48,000 meals um, is what's being provided so far from just the amount of that our teams have brought in. So it's um it's a really cool. You can make monetary donations uh, to a team. You can join a team, or you can simply just record a challenging video and and challenge your friends to to take part in the Hunger Hero Challenge. So a lot of ways to get involved in that. Even if you're not a runner or a walker, uh, you can still take part in the Hunger Hero Challenge and help uh, raise money for Treasure Coast Food Bank. Uh, there will be awards for the top fundraisers for both uh, the individual category and for teams. So again, another fun way to um, possibly uh, receive some awards for your support. Um, and then, of course, the more money you raise, uh, the more prizes you can win. And we have a whole listing of those prizes um, on our website. When you go to the um, run page, you can win a Hunger Hero hat. You can get a, a nice little Treasure Coast Food Bank cooler. We have water bottles, sunglasses, and a lot of other cool prizes that you can win. Um, up to 10 members on your team will get those prizes. And um, so work hard to raise money and you can end up going home with a little bit of everything. So i um, really excited about that. So it's not too late. You can build a team um, again all the way up until the run starts on September 21st. You can you can start a team and and start fundraising. You never know. You might be the top fundraiser by then. So um, it should be a lot of fun. And another really fun event we're excited about is going to be um, the annual Toast to the Treasure Coast. And this is going to be our annual event. It was the Fall Flavors event previously. Um, it's going to be taking place at Selfish Brewing Company in downtown Fort Pierce. And that is going to be Wednesday, September 25th from 6 p.m. to 9 p.m. Um, we're going to be partnering again um, with Self Selfish Brewing Company and um, a lot of our wonderful partners, a lot of the breweries, cider houses, wineries are going to be partnering with several of the, the local restaurants here on the Treasure Coast to create that unique tasting pairing. Um, as um, some, sorry, losing my screen here for a second. Okay, there we go. So for three hours, you'll be able to visit all of our pairings. Uh, you'll be able to sample those. And at the end of the night, you'll also be able to vote on your favorite. And at the end of the night, there'll be awards will be presented to the, the top restaurant and the top uh, brewing company pairing. So it'll be um, just a super great time. For that, tickets are $45 each and uh, available at the Selfish Brewing Company website, selfishbrewingco.com. So again, um, there's only a limited amount of tickets for that event. I believe there's 200 available. And I know um, just based on what I've heard, those tickets are going really fast. So if you're interested in going to that event, by all means, please go ahead and get your tickets. Um, it is a 21 and up event, um, but there's going to be a lot of great food. And um, I know our Treasure Coast Food Bank Catering Department is going to be part of that too. I think we're, we're teamed up with the Ocean Republic Brewing Company this year. So uh, it's going to be a lot of fun. And I did get a sneak peek on the recipe for that. For what they're going to be having but i can't tell you yet so, so anyway and then lastly i'm going to be um i want to tell you a little bit about pack the house pack the house is um is a, our signature event thank you jackie um we are um it's going to be october 25th and 26th this year and we're gonna have 900 plus volunteers signed up this year for the event over the two-day period which is just incredible the amount of support we're getting for that <clears throat> This year, we're going to build 15,000 holiday food boxes uh, that are going to support local children, families, and seniors uh, who are facing hunger in our community. Um, each of those boxes is going to include a variety of canned vegetables, macaroni and cheese, rice, mashed potatoes, cranberry sauce stuffing, and uh, a lot more. Um, the boxes are going to be distributed along with a protein item um, that can consist of a turkey, chicken, um, hams, um, through our mobile distributions and also through our network of 300 plus partners uh, throughout the four counties that we serve. Um, just a fun fact, um, Pack the House started in 2014 
Uh, it was just a crazy idea to start a 24 hour packing event for our volunteers. Um, we had just under 400 volunteers for that event. And um, originally it was designed just to be an awareness event. And so over time as the, the program developed, um, it's now Treasure Coast Food Bank signature event. And I, again, it's gonna this year alone, um, 900 plus volunteers. Um, the event back then included a midnight Zuma class. We did a karaoke contest, which Victoria was part of at 3 a.m. in the morning. And um, it was it was still a lot of fun. It was just um, crazy hours. Um, thanks to Hurricane Matthew in 2016, that format changed a little bit. And um, we also found out that moving the event to October uh, made the warehouse about 15 degrees cooler. And so um, that was a really big part of it. But um, the support has been tremendous this year. We're really, really excited to have um, over 20 corporate partners. Uh, that are sponsoring the event and three presenting sponsors with a1 industries walmart supply chain and um, cleveland clinic so thank you to all of them for their support um, three hour shifts are available all the registration is live as um, victoria was mentioning earlier if you go to our website at stophunger.org and you can actually go to the pack the house page um, you can see all the available shifts for that you can sign up as a group you can sign up as an individual a family um, should be a lot of fun each shift will be packed with great food a wonderful music. We will be doing karaoke um, on Friday from the six to nine shift at night. Well, we're all going to sing our little hearts out, and um, should be a lot of fun. All right, and then Jackie, and then um, we're really, really excited about Hunger Action Day. This is a nationwide effort to, um, as part of Hunger Action Month, on September 10th. Um, everyone, we want to ask as many people as can to go orange with us on social media share your photos on hunger action day um, this is our day to really to really shine and so we ask you to um, get as many people involved as that as you can uh, and get your coworkers, your friends your family um, take pictures post 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 we can't ask you to do that enough i know our social media team our marketing team um, they're really excited to share anything that you guys provide and um, i know we're going to be doing our part here at the food bank that day to really um, show our orange colors and support for hunger action month and there's a lot of different ways that you can get involved um, there's a calendar that we have put together for you it can give you some suggestions the things you can do each day um, you can maybe skip your coffee one morning and donate that money to the food bank um, but that calendar is available at our website at stophunger.org and um, you can also find that on our, our Treasure Coast Food Bank Facebook page. And I believe now we're going to take a, um, just, just take a look at what we, we have going on and a, a great video from um, Treasure Coast Food Bank. I think we're hearing it, Jackie. Is that true? Let's see. There we go. All right, Jessica. All right, guys, so this is a chance for um, anyone that has any questions. Um, please feel free to um, ask any of our panelists here. We're happy to answer any questions you may have. Um, you can put those in the chat. You can talk with us live. 
um, we're here to support you. So happy to hear any questions that you may have. All right, I'm going to take a look at our chat to see if we have any questions in there. Seen anything? Um, any burning questions that folks have? We peppered you with lots of information. <laughs> Just checking the Q&A box, not seeing anything there. Oh, I see somebody asking a question. Thank you, Karina. <laughs> so, see just a minute. Oh, well, thank you very much. We appreciate the compliment. Karina says that um, she, we did a great job and was full of lots of great information. <laughs> Thank you. All right. Well, if there are no other questions, oh, looks like another question is coming in. So I am just going to pause for a second. I feel like we need Jeopardy music or something. <laughs> do, 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 do. <laughs> yeah. Um, there is a question for Victoria. Victoria, are there any new programs or initiatives aimed at improving the volunteer experience that you're excited about? Uh, there are so many different new ideas that we have coming um, everybody's way. So for our mobile programs, um, we're expanding there. Our mobile distributions are expanding themselves with a ton of new sites that we're going to be bringing to different areas of our community um, and hopefully reaching more volunteers. And um, we have our park it market that we are working on expanding as well, where we'll hopefully have some volunteer opportunities for that, where you'll be able to distribute fresh produce to your community. Um, really, any anything that you can think of, we are trying to bring to you. So we want to bring you, you know, more opportunities in our production kitchen. I'm going to be working with our whole child connection team in Martin County to see, you know, how we can fill their needs there and bring some volunteers in. I'll be working with our Your Plate office here in Fort Pierce as well to see, you know, where we can put volunteers and really help them with everything that they handle for us. So we are bringing tons of new volunteer opportunities everybody's way over the next few months, and I'm very excited for it. Awesome. Thank you. Um, great. There is another question about how far in advance should groups sign up for Pack the House? Gary, you want to take that? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, you can sign up right now. Um, we have all the registration, all the registration information up on the website. Um, if you wanted to sign up as an individual, you can do that. If you want to sign up as a group, you can reach out to either uh, Victoria or myself, and we'd be happy to put that together for you with the registration link so that you can have everybody pre-register. But um, yeah, registration is open now, and I would suggest the sooner the better because those spots will fill up really, really quickly that are available. And um, so yeah, definitely go to the website, check that out today, and take a look at what shift and let us know how we can help you register for that. Great, thank you. Um, there's a question about how do we measure the success of Hunger Action Month and what outcomes are we hoping to achieve this year? It's a big question. Um, I think that there are short-term outcomes and there are long-term outcomes. I mean, if we're very successful in Hunger Action Month, it's a nationwide movement, then we'll celebrate because the numbers of um, the demand will go down, right? Um, but um, in terms of short term success with all those activities that we've talked about that we're doing, we assign measurement opportunities so we understand if they have a big impact, you know, for our run, um, fundraising dollars raised, um, how many um, runners we have are great indicators of community engagement, um, you know, from a social media perspective and our website, we can track the metrics to see how people are engaging. We look at the volunteer service hours and the numbers um, of interest that comes our way. We look at the food drives and how much food we were able to raise during Hunger Action Month. Um, and so, but ultimately the big goal is to see um, you know, hunger and food insecurity numbers reduce in the area. And so that's the collective goal. That's the big goal that we're after. 
All right. Any other questions? I don't think we. Oh. All right. All right. Well, um, thank you so much for everyone that joined. Um, we appreciate your time. Thank you to the panel for your presentations and um, join us um, for our next Food for Thought. We'll be putting out some information about that. Um, thank you, everyone. Thanks, everyone.